systems enable financial institutions to provide affordable credit and other financial services to more people. This in turn stimulates the growth of existing businesses. The process of access to usage of diverse, convenient, affordable financial services is among the challenge for businesses, especially small and medium enterprises in Uganda, if not even the major. The government has often supported you to get credit for your businesses. But how many of you can testify the effectiveness of this? What needs to be done to improve your business inclusion in the financial space? And this sets the pace for this week's discussion. Hello, thank you for joining us. My name is Rita Cavanero and this is Market Watch. With me is a Ugandan business executive, executive economist, author, entrepreneur, and scientist, founder of Oxford International Development Advisors Limited, co founder of Oxford Green Partnership, and executive director of the Federation of Small and Medium Enterprises in Uganda. And that is uh, Dawn Walagembe here. And I've got the Head of Financial Inclusion Division at the Bank of Uganda, whose role includes coordinating the implementation of National Financial Inclusion Strategy for Uganda, implementation of the strategy for financial literacy in the country, and promotion of financial innovations. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm coming to you live from Nalwan Studios. Make sure you don't forget to share the link down there and also hitting onto the subscribe button doing the notification bell so that you keep listening to this information let's begin with our discussion here uh, kicking it with how adoptive is a financial system being to entrepreneurs and customers mr. Walgembe here yes. I know you one of the entrepreneurs around the country how is inclusion ongoing between you as entrepreneurs and then the services you offer to the customers Okay, so I think there has been a lot of positive progress mm, mm, over mm. the years. Mm. Uh, you see, we have a number of commercial banks. We also have a number of microfinance deposit taking institutions. Mm. And then we also have a range of uh, what we could call tier for financial institutions. Now, if you look at the MSME sector, because that's the structure of on the supply side, if you look at the demand side, you find that a lot of businesses in this country are informal and they are mm -hmm. micro in nature. So it means that these kinds of informal businesses find it difficult to access financing from formal financial institutions. That's why they keep complaining the requirements are complicated and things of that sort. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. these businesses tend to rely a lot on personal savings and informal and tier for financial institutions, you know, mm -hmm. circles. Uh, money lenders and others. Now, as you go upwards, you find a bit of small and medium sized businesses. Mm -hmm. These tend to go to the mainstream financial institutions, primarily commercial banks, because in our economy, uh, there's a lot of uh, interest in debt. But that's also because the other options are not very well developed. Okay. Now, okay. For these businesses, they have some inherent weaknesses that make it difficult for them to access financing. Mm. One is most of them are very poor at bookkeeping. Two, uh, because they are not, uh, and then they don't have very strong internal systems. Mm. For financier, because they don't know these kinds of businesses, they tend to rely on records and other things, audited accounts and so on, to assess the risk. So if you don't have these things, it means your risk profile is, ex is very high. Mm. 
Mm. You see? Mm. And then we also have the problem of dishonesty by some of our businesses. They borrow from the, this financial institution, they don't repay, and then they want to borrow from the other I one. I borrow and I have to borrow from you, I go and borrow yes. to, pay the, uh, yes. to pay the store charge. That's on that demand, that's on that demand side. So I accept mm. that someone coming from that side of SMEs that we also have weaknesses. Mm. But also our colleagues on the supply side also have weaknesses. So the, our, uh, if you look at the formal financial institutions, mm. they lump SMEs together and say all of them are risky. So the risk profile of the SME sector generally is mm. taken to be very high. Okay. So the banks choose to, you know, invest their money in government treasuries and so on because these are safer options okay i really appreciate yeah. uh, mr wolgenbe has yeah. at least tried to give us an overview Correct. around what is happening uh, from yes. his sector being yes. an entrepreneur he's heading a federation for small and medium enterprises yes. but what do banks um, you know reflect in this particular regard let me cross over to uh, mr ochan that is uh, from bank of uganda to highlight for us what specifically bank of uganda is uh, supporting and how it's supporting to access financial inclusion around the country. Uh, thank you very much and I'm, I'm glad to be here. I, I think we need to start by looking at what's the role of the regulator of government for that matter. Mm -hmm. um, one is to provide an environment for which uh, the private sector would thrive fully mm -hmm. and that includes safety. And how are we doing that? Um, we have the National Financial Inclusion Strategy for Uganda. It's a, a 2017 to 2022 strategy. Mm. And what does that do? But, but, but before we go into the strategy, what, what are financial services? It goes beyond credit. It's access to payment service, access to an account where you can save, access to insurance where you can manage your risk. Mm. Uh, so, so all that in a way, or even to capital markets where you can invest. So when you talk about financial inclusion... Or Not forgetting to, affordability. Yes, you're right. When you talk about financial service, you look at mm -hmm. the entire spectrum of uh, the financial service that an individual or a business can use uh, to thrive. Mm -hmm. Now, in the National Financial Inclusion Strategy, we look at access to and usage of quality and affordable, like you say, financial services and products. Mm -hmm. That would, of course, ensure that someone is, has financial security. Mm -hmm. uh, in general, as a vision for, for, the, for the strategy. Mm -hmm. How we are doing it is around four, uh, four or five areas. One, we are trying to improve as an objective, improve uh, uh, access to financial services, that is the infrastructure, but to also look at the digital infrastructure uh, centered around mobile money, uh, as well as the national suite. Mm -hmm. We are also looking at the credit infrastructure. Uh, my colleague John just mentioned about uh, information asymmetry. So mm -hmm. uh, as a central bank, we are saying, can we expand the current coverage of uh, credit reference barrier to include even other credit providers that are currently not included? Because that then reduces information asymmetry, where you can borrow from one person, then you go to the next person, then you go to the next person. Mm -hmm. You keep refinancing your loan by borrowing through another, uh, from another institution. So that, that's, that's coming in place. Uh, we also look, how, how do you then make people broaden their savings, investments, or insurance options as one of the objectives that, that the strategy looks at. And the last one of, is, of course, consumer empowerment and, 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 and protection as well. Okay. Uh, and, and under consumer empowerment, they're saying, can we empower consumer on both sides? One, by providing financial literacy. Mm -hmm. And I think you talked about it uh, very well. You find there are individuals that do not know how to manage their own money. Mm -hmm. You know, they get money for today and they want to spend it today. And that has implications, especially for the, the micro, small and medium sized enterprises that may be very small. They quickly get excited with the money they've got today and forget that once they borrow, they need to pay back. Mm -hmm. So the Bank of Uganda has taken that initiative through financial literacy to empower individuals and enterprises to manage their finances well. But of course, on the consumer protection side, we also look at uh, the consumer protection regulations, especially for the mobile money, which is going to come in place very soon. Okay. Thank you so much. And uh, like uh, Mr. Olgembe mentioned here earlier, uh, there has been complaints. I don't know whether uh, SMEs take it on as complaints, uh, unsatisfaction. 
are rising because of you know interest coming in when they go to access finance to access credit and you have mentioned that in uh, some uh, some of your discussions mr walgembe but i want to know because we want to try resolve this how can entrepreneurs how can smes do better in this financial space what is the problem i i don't want to think that the banks will always be happy when you're going to access credit borrow and they are calling you back all the time and you go to DD, ddb you go to maybe centenary you borrow from there transitioning to pay the other i feel like maybe banks can appreciate that which you will tell us but what is the end game for the entrepreneurs for SMEs this side, Mr. Walgame? Okay. Uh, sorry, I thought it, that question was directly. He is going to tell but us I, I, more. I mean, but I want to know the challenge so that we can maybe try to, to resolve something here. Okay, so a lot of interest by entrepreneurs is mm. on credit. Mm. Why is it on credit? Because that is what they seem to appreciate. Okay. In our context, I would say that the capital markets are fairly undeveloped. Insurance penetration is very low. However, we are, wh what I see, and that we will need to credit the central bank and uh, government, mm. is on the area of digitalization. I think if you look at how digitalization is driving financial inclusion, I think this is extremely important, mm. and it will help us actually uh, overcome some of the barriers that SMEs are faced traditionally, especially with regard to information asymmetry and the time it takes and, 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 and so on. So in that case, we, we are moving very well. Okay. Now, when you, when you talk about the issue of the complaints, the yeah. banks in, in a way have, have in some form tended to be extremely rigid. We appreciate mm. that they are regulated by the central bank and they need to follow some guidelines. But we feel that they have not innovated as mm. much as they would have in, in, the, in terms of reaching SMEs. Let's look, for instance, at sectors. They tend to look at, if from the federation's perspective, for instance, we would mm. want to see banks coming up with products that are sector specific. Okay. A loan product okay. for a metal fabricator may not be a, the loan product for the tailor, mm -hmm. may not be the same loan product for, for the, for the, for the sh wholesaler. Mm -hmm. But in our context, many banks, they'll just have what they call a business loan, you know, and mm -hmm. everyone just has to go this, uh, it's, it's kind of like one size fits it all. So mm -hmm. I think there's room mm -hmm. for financial institutions to innovate taking advantage of technology and also trying to adapt their products to different segments and different sectors and, and so on. And okay. I think that's an area that is lacking. The other issue is that the banks need to break barriers between themselves okay. and the clients. And I think agency banking has done a lot in that regard. Mm -hmm. How do you make sure that you're able to reach the final consumer and they're able to understand what your products are in a simple way and to trust you? Mm -hmm. So I think that that is also an area related to financial literacy that more work needs to be done. In. To break that uh, that gap. Thank you yeah, so much. Yeah, some of the bank. I mean, some SMEs, if you're going to a bank branch and it's very clean and stuff, are you, you know, they feel, that they feel intimidated. <laughs> they feel intimidated. So we are saying, what can and what can be done mm -hmm. to make it easier for SMEs to access okay. uh, financing and feel comfortable and and, and so on. And uh, I would say agency banking has gone a long way in that mm -hmm. regard. Thank you so much. And uh, we're speaking about increasing access to financial services in Uganda. We're speaking from a perspective of entrepreneurs, SMEs, but to you as an individual. I want you to borrow this conversation, this knowledge here, put it in your daily life, in your daily sustainability development, because it starts there. Let's go to how... Uh, you know, the bank as well, Bank of Uganda, as you are enabling access to finance, you're providing the literacy, you are even, uh, the central bank is regulating these, some of the, you know, um, uh, rules that happen along accessibility. Is there a change in strengthening capacity building for population around the country? Yeah, thank you for that question. Um, like, like I said, one of the things that the central bank has been doing, uh, we coordinate uh, the strategy for financial literacy. Yes. And that strategy looks at uh, three or four 
priority areas. One mm. is the workplaces. Okay. It also looks at the women. Mm. It looks mm. at the rural population. Mm. Uh, it looks at the youth. But we have also the special interest groups. Mm -hmm. Now, in the special interest groups, we are looking at the forcibly displaced persons. We are looking at school children because uh, school children, uh, as well as um, uh, digital financial li uh, literacy, uh, one area that we've noticed of late is that the population is likely going digital. But they, are they going digital? in a more responsible way. You've had complaints around mobile money and, and all that. So mm -hmm. the central bank has taken upon themselves to coordinate the strategy, but also implement it. Uh, and, and one of the things that we do, we do what we call the financial literacy training of trainers program, mm -hmm. where we empower someone to become a trainer. For example, if John or, 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 or the Federation has uh, leaders who we can train, they become then like trainers for the rest of the SMEs in financial aid. But if you know how to manage your money, you may not fail to manage a business. Mm, mm. But if you don't know how to manage your own money, chances that you'll fail in your business is quite high. Mm. Uh, but beyond that, we also partner with key institutions like the NSSF that does a lot of financial literacy around workplaces, especially for their members and other development partners. Mm. We've gone around the country and trained in excess of 2,000 trainers that we have and they're available if someone wants to use them. But we, we also go out there and provide training uh, in different areas. Mm -hmm. Our next target is now to look at um, areas where we found the level of financial literacy or capabilities is so low. Okay. Yeah. And, and based on what we've done over the past uh, six or seven years, we've seen an improvement mm -hmm. based on the service that we've carried out. Okay, uh, thank you for the uh, for you know the service literacy awareness being provided out there. Uh, if you could be honest with us. What change is re reliably, visibly seen, reflecting how businesses are moving on, the adoption of the digital, you know, translations that you be, you know, telling them? Yeah, th th that's a very good question. What change are we seeing? Yes. Uh, I'll start with, and, and that's why I was trying to use, use numbers, that, that what we've seen over a period is a bit of a, an improvement in the way people used to do. And we've got testimonies from from those we've trained as a, as a starting point. Mm. But also when you look at it uh, from a point of view of the digital, mm. we've seen a lot of uh, digital adoption. If I'm to tell you how many people are using mobile money. Uh, they're quite a number. <laughs> which are active actually. In, in, in excess of 22 million accounts are on mobile money active, by the way. Mm. And if I talk about total, of course there's double counting, we have 38 million accounts in total. Okay. That's in excess of uh, adult population, those mm -hmm. who are above uh, 16 years. Mm -hmm. I think we have 21 million adults, meaning me, you, excluding the children, because the population in Uganda is about 50% uh, is below, below 16 years. Mm -hmm. We have a very young population okay. with a median age of about 15.7. Okay. So from that perspective, I, I think we've really gone digital, not just in the financial sector, but generally. Okay, I, I'm going to uh, pose, it the, pose it the same way to Mr. Walugembe here. Mm -hmm. From what Mr. Ochan is saying, you mm. as SMEs, mm. d does that reflect in your businesses? Does that reflect in the, the people you're interacting with at the Federation, the entrepreneurs, the business people you interact with? Does it reflect? No, so I, I would say that we've made progress, certainly. And w I think one of the areas that uh, we are quite grateful for and we give kudos to government and the other agencies and mm -hmm. all the uh, private sector actors, by the way, mm -hmm. is in the area of digitalization. Okay. But even within that space, there is, we, as a country, uh, we, we, we have a lot of work to do. If you look, let's look at the issue of insurance, for instance. Okay. If insurance, the penetration rate is extremely low. There's a lot of work to be done to ensure that more people come within the insurance bracket and are able to moderate their risk. Let's look at the aspect of capital markets. Mm -hmm. How can those entities also adopt digitalization in order to roll out, you mm -hmm. know, in order to roll out uh, their products? Mm -hmm. And I think the central bank, as we undertake, we do work on the demand side through financial literacy and so on. We should also encourage uh, these guys to innovate. I'm happy that the central bank came up with a sandbox to allow uh, digital innovations mm -hmm. and, and, and so on. I, I thought that was extremely um, foresighted. Okay. But in the capital markets, my view is that a lot of work ought to be done. 
uh, in the insurance space, a lot of work ne needs to be done. That, that's, that's my sense, and mm -hmm. that, that's, that, that, that's food for thought for Bank of Uganda, to encourage the actors, to encourage the insurance regulatory authority and the other players to see to it that they are able to be as open-minded as you are in, re in regard to aspects of credit and payment. Okay, thank you so yes. much. I also do understand, Mr. Walgembe, that we've got manufacturers around the country and yes. uh, some of them fall under uh, your category yes. as well. Yes. And commercial banks are planning to provide one trillion uh, shillings to credit facility to export that kind of facilitation to them to boost their regional markets. How are you that preparing? Are these, are these local banks or regional banks? Uh, these, these are commercial banks here, local banks. Okay, so this is, okay. Um, I've, I've, I've not heard about this particular package because what I heard about is the, is the package by equity with the ESC. Mm. That uh, is also there, but there is now a combination coming up. Like you said earlier, the space that banks need at least to create income together at some point. I see it coming here, but the question is the preparation for from entrepreneurs and SMEs. The issue has always not been availability of money. Okay. Money has always been available. Okay. The banks have, in fact, the problem is that the banks on one hand, the banks have the money. Okay. On the other hand, the SMEs want the money, mm -hmm. and they can't meet, meet each other. So how can we ensure that we remove those roadblocks? Okay. If we talk about reducing the risk profile of mm -hmm. SMEs, mm -hmm. helping them to keep records, helping them to have a track record, mm -hmm. how can we make that easier to ensure that they are able to tap into that money? So mm -hmm. for me as a person, I, I mean, if you look, for instance, we, we, ne we, we negotiated with government mm. and we put in place the small business recovery fund mm. that BOU manages with, with different commercial banks. Mm. Mm. Some of these challenges we talk about still reappear. So even when government puts the money there, you find that the SMEs can't actually get it because of those challenges that I've mentioned, both on the demand side and on the supply side, but mainly on the demand side. Okay. So I think, Rita, maybe I could come in. Uh, please. I, I think the question is, how do we de-risk Okay. Mm -hmm. that, that subsector, uh, the, the micro, small, and medium mm. enterprise. And, and mm. I love the way John is putting it across. Mm. On the supply side, banks are into lending. Yes. But as, as long as the risk profile for the SMEs are quite high, mm. they will be a bit hesitant. True. Uh, because the, the funds that they have is supposed to go out, not actually to keep in their vaults. But then mm. the SMEs mm. on the demand side needs to, to mm. keep, for example, good records, mm. be able to comply with their repayment terms, Mm -hmm. You may be surprised that there are some SMEs that get this funding in mm -hmm. a very easy way. Mm -hmm. So okay. there, there, is, there could be isolated cases, and they might be the majority because they're not looking at, if you have a good relationship with your bankers, mm -hmm. actually they call you for funding. Okay. Do you need some more facility? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you, make, you must make sure that whenever you're borrowing, it's profitable, and you're going mm -hmm. to use it in a way that it enhances your business. Mm -hmm. Now, to some extent, we've seen cases where people go, in the guise of doing business, after borrowing, they go and go for the party or <laughs> go and marry for a wedding. So the purpose of the loan, one of the studies we did actually found that mm. most cases, the purpose that they indicate is not where they use the money for. Okay. You know, so you say I want it for A, B, C, D. You've given us very good uh, projections of profitability and ability to pay, and that's mm. what banks look at. Well, banks are not interested, for example, in you in new collateral mm. because they are not in the business of selling your house. Mm. They look at your projection. Whatever business you're doing, will it be able to generate cash flows and therefore pay back? Okay. And do banks uh, have specific products for specific entrepreneurs or SMEs? What do I mean here? There has been, you know, uh, some concern, public concern, that when you go to Bank X, when you don't, you're not uh, this kind of uh, person, you're not going to get it at this percentage. So if you could uh, clear the air here during financial inclusion, during a accessing finance are there specific products or specific segmentation that when you come you are maybe from manufacturing you're entitled to this you maybe from this sector you're entitled to this reflecting even from what mr walgembe was saying earlier if you could uh, be specific on that i think that's that's a business decision really that, that i wouldn't say that banks have uh, 
for each sector a different mm. rate. Mm. But I would generally say that there are sectors which are more risky than others. Please. And for that matter, the pricing may be different. Mm. And, and, and also there are some SME sector, sub-sector I would say, mm. which could be more risky. For example, banks look at agriculture as a, as a risky sector. Okay. Therefore, lending there, you need to have a premium that would cater for the risk. While there are some sectors that um, mm -hmm. are, are not risky at all. Okay. Also, sometimes the, the housing sector could be risky. The real estate sector mm -hmm. could mm -hmm. be risky. So it, it, it's, it's a business decision for each bank. I, I will tell you that even within lending, which banks call uh, salary loans, Mm -hmm. There are some institutions which are more risky than others, mm -hmm. you know. So, so therefore, the rate, the interest rate that you pay may be different. But that is that depends on the risk profiling of okay. the different sectors. What is more important is to make sure that we de-risk the sector which they think is risky. Mm -hmm. In this case, the, the micro, small, and medium enterprises. But that requires a lot of work. Okay, and uh, which is why, gentlemen, you're here. At least we can try to bridge out some of the gaps that are missing, and we put them to you, and you can reflect that in your business. But, uh, Mr. Wolgembe, what experience can you give us? People are yearning to hear from you. There are many instances where they've gone to get um, credit, and then coming to business, it's not reflecting, and they're asking themselves, "Should I go ahead?" to get you know this credit in the next uh, plan and uh, considering the fact that that loan is on your back the bank needs it so you end up going somewhere else for another loan to pay Centenary or to pay any other bank what kind of experience do we have to dodge when we are accessing finance well I, I have to tell people that just because banks are willing to give money doesn't yeah. mean that you must borrow forget whether you are able to you're eligible for the loan or not. Sometimes mm -hmm. you are eligible, you have the collateral, you tick all the boxes, but your business does not need the money. This is where okay. issues of financial literacy come in. Because mm -hmm. just picking money because it's available mm -hmm. without looking at whether or not your business needs the money at that point or whether you're able to generate the cash flows to service the loan and to, to, to make sure that you meet your obligation within mm -hmm. the business. You're setting yourself up for disaster. And that goes for micro businesses, for small businesses, and even for medium-sized businesses. Okay. So we should not assume. Sometimes it's important for you to grow your business organically. Mm -hmm. And it's only at that point that you need to scale all the fundamentals that take. And you see, I need this loan to bridge this gap. And everything is said that you need to approach uh, a bank. Okay. The other issue is oh, that uh, SMEs must appreciate. We shouldn't also, as a country, we've, we are too obsessed with debt and credit. Mm. That's because that's what we are used to. But now there's w what we call the private equity. You know, mm -hmm. A lot of investors are looking for sound businesses that they'll invest in directly without you going through the stock exchange. They'll invest in you directly take a bit of ownership of course so because it's equity it means you have to give up something mm -hmm. you know someone can't bring their money and you continue employing your, your wife your daughter and so on it means that you must professionalize when they come in and bring in their money you have to let go of some decision making space mm -hmm. you see and that's where our SMEs have problems they want to receive the equity but they are not willing to give up <laughs> the powers they want to still make decisions as they were making in the past, which causes a bit of a problem. Mm -hmm. So I would say, look at other options. Don't just look at debt. Look at equity. Yeah, there are also digital lenders, but these tend to deal in very small amounts at the moment. Okay. You know, so whatever your needs are, it's very important that you're not just fixated on, um, on, on debt. Mm -hmm. Try to look at, can I finance my business through can the company finance itself through the profits it, it has been making? Because some people just keep diverting money from the business. When yeah. the business makes profits, you take the money out and do your things. You build a new apartment, you build a new house. I and then you come back the working. next year, you come back the next year, oh, we are looking for credit, we are looking. But the business is self-financing. You're just diverting the money. Isn't you know? it why I am working, getting a loan to do better, uh, Mr. Ochan, if you could uh, throw your advice here, give us your advice. When I get like a, a bit of profit here, I see one on Peter, or I can, you know, uh, take on this. I have to divert the money. You know, we, we always tell people, 
Mm. And, and I want to agree with you on that. Mm. You borrow to grow. At the beginning, start organically. Okay. Businesses, most times at the starting point, may not give you profits. Mm -hmm. Now, to some extent, people also have to be realistic. We give ourselves very good protections mm -hmm. at the start. Mm -hmm. And when you open the business, especially if you borrowed for as a startup, you might find yourself running for nearly a year before people start actually consuming your products en masse. Now, mm -hmm. what that means is that initially you you have in cost that you cannot cover by the revenues. Mm -hmm. You know, that's where the problem comes. So you find themselves not being able mm -hmm. to repay the loan. But also as they go, if they must borrow, then they need to negotiate for a grace period. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't borrow for a business that you're starting today and they tell you next month you're going to start paying back. Mm -hmm. You know, that makes actually some people apportion part of the loan to repay the loan. So mm -hmm. you start asking yourself really, what, what was the purpose of borrowing if you're using the same loan to pay back? And, and those are dangers. Now you talked about picking portion of the profits. Yes. It has to come at, an at, at the right time. You need to look at why are you constructing at that time and will it save you anything? We've seen people picking the funds and stopping at the foundation. You know, the, 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 if they think about rental, the rental does not get over. So you need to be very realistic with your projections whenever you, you're going into borrowing or diverting funds from, from the business. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, ladies and gentlemen watching us, we're going to go into a very short break. But we're still speaking about increasing access to financial services in Uganda. This could be you as an entrepreneur, as an individual, you can apply this in your businesses as well. And more targeting SMEs and like I said, entrepreneurs. Make sure you keep on to this particular link, share it, hit on to the subscription, subscription button. Also, not notification bell to make sure you always get the information. We return shortly. Very well, we are here going to speak about digital financial inclusion. Many of us, maybe some of you, including you, when you hear about digital, something digital, your mind runs to technology. It switches to technology. But let us understand what more is there for digital financing, what more is there for you and your businesses to entirely get included in this particular space. Uh, Mr. John Walgebe here earlier on was mentioning how and crediting the central bank and other banks, you know, coming up at least making it easy for businesses with cards, mobile money and all that. But from your observation, Mr. Walgebe, are we doing this correctly? Are SMEs, entrepreneurs onto this platform doing it correctly? Utilizing the digital space correctly, the digital tools rightly? Mm -hmm. Okay, so firstly, I would say that uh, the issue of digital transformation is of concern to us as a federation. Mm, mm, mm. We have been running a digital literacy campaign with UCC for the last four years. Okay. So far, we've targeted about uh, 10,000 SMEs. Mm. We have found that uh, most SMEs use the mobile phone. 
But sadly, most SMEs have what they call the legacy, those legacy funds that will touch. Capesa. Capesa, yes. Mm -hmm. Now, the beauty uh, is that uh, many of them mm -hmm. uh, regularly use mobile money, mm -hmm. mainly pa payments. Eh? Mm -hmm. So that, that, that they use, which is a positive. And I think it's in line with what Mr. Chan said with regard to the number of accounts. I think on that level we've scored. But actually the rise, the uptake in digital payments is an indictment on the traditional financial system. The fact that a lot of people were willing to go online meant that there was a gap. Mm -hmm. And we are happy that uh, we were able to kind of harness it in time. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the range of other services that SMEs are not taking advantage of. And I would say also that uh, the financial service providers. Mm. For instance, if you look at the issue of uh, the credit reference, credit reference for instance. At the moment, credit reference, the bureau, um, I mean, and I'm not an expert there, mm. but my assumption is that they're mainly looking at borrowing records, eh? mm. borrowing stuff. They're saying, no, credit reference ought to go beyond that. Because Beyond the record checker. Yeah, bec because if I don't borrow, there, there has to be other information. For instance, if you look at, if gov for instance, if a financial institution had access to how regular I pay my water bill, mm -hmm. how I pay my uh, electricity, how everything, because all that data, how I use my phone, how much I load every week and things of that sort, all that data, what you call big data, can give a picture of the honesty of an individual. Because mm -hmm. if a person is coming for 100 million, but is always unable to pay their water bill and stuff like that, it means this person is unlikely at some point, is likely to default. Okay. So I think there's still room, especially in the area of reducing the, uh, the risk profile of SMEs, mm -hmm. to leverage uh, big data. Mm -hmm. Similarly, on the, on the demand side, there's need for more literacy, both in terms of financial literacy, but also in terms of digital literacy, mm -hmm. on how SMEs can use their smartphones in order to improve uh, their access to different financial services. And then finally, there's also room for more innovation on the supply side mm -hmm. to come up with appropriate digital products mm -hmm. that SMEs can take at an affordable rate. This goes for insurance, it goes for capital markets, if you're buying shares and stuff, what, what can you do? How can you make it easy for, mm -hmm. people, to, uh, for people to take advantage of such kinds of services? Okay. Finally, there was, um, there was a case some time back, and I'm happy that court, Altex, I think, stock exchange, Maybe up. I'll get to the case a little bit, just a so. second, uh, Mr. Walgame. So. Let me cross to Mr. Otan here. In your digitalization agenda as, a, as the central bank, if you could let us know, someone is waiting to hear how you are supporting them. There has been a number of developers coming these days, uh, putting up, you know, applications. Someone, you, you can sell somewhere, buy online, uh, shop, because all that is financial inclusion at some point. There is payment included in. I'm just wondering how you are supporting that kind of agenda. Uh, uh, some Ugandans coming up, setting up platforms for transitions of payment, trans, uh, some of them, you know, reaching out to door-to-door -door steps, helping people really to ease the business kind. I don't know how that agenda is. Yeah, um, I, I th thank you, thank you, uh, Rita. We need to look at the mandate of the central bank in the payment space, yes. and I think that is that comes from uh, the recent national payment systems. Mm -hmm. Act, the 2020 and the implementing regulations of 2021 mm. that provides for the central bank in licensing payment service providers, yeah. payment systems operators, or issuers of uh, payment instruments. Mm. And I think the central bank has done pretty well in, in, in that, that, that respect. Mm. Looking at the last one year and maybe and a half from around March 2021 when the regulations came in place, you recall that there were some players that were operating under no objection. Mm. Uh, mobile money, MTN, uh, mobile money, Airtel. Uh, and the law required that they separate the voice business from uh, the payments business. Mm. So now we have MTN, uh, which is um, for the mobile money separate form. 
mm -hmm. uh, the voice and yes. data. And also we have Airtel cameras, which is different from uh, the voice and data. So far, the central bank has licensed about uh, 17 players in the space that are competing in that, that, that space. Okay. And, and we are seeing a lot of innovations coming on board. I could mention one player that came with Kira Code mm, to promote mm. uh, uh, electronic payments uh, or similar to, to, to mobile money. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. anybody in the village can just get a card like an ATM card with a quote on it and be able to access financial services. Okay. Um, that one, of course, you talked about how we promote. Uh, we have what you call the regulatory sandbox mm. that allows mm. players that uh, are willing to innovate, to come and test their innovations. And we've seen a lot of interest coming in that space, including uh, cryptocurrency, mm -hmm. wanting to test if really it's a payment instrument. Can they test and see whether the risk around cryptos can, 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 can be identified and therefore be licensed, if that is the case? Mm -hmm. We've also seen people going into the agricultural value chain that can we digitize the entire value chain uh, and use that information for example you want to order for 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 inputs uh, you want to order for fertilizers you want to make the payments that entire value chain uh, they're trying to see and that provides a lot of information including for giving credit okay. uh, if that information is available but just say what is our roadmap in the digital space mm -hmm. and that comes from what are the barriers you know, okay. Mr. Walogembe mentioned a few digital financial literacy is one of them and general financial literacy, we've seen that. We've also seen regulatory barriers in some areas and, and the bank is looking at uh, improving some of uh, the areas. Uh, limited interoperability. Mm -hmm. uh, payment should be seamless. If I want to pay you, it shouldn't matter which network you're using. Mm -hmm. It should be affordable. I shouldn't be carrying three mobile money wallets mm -hmm. on me and I have to load A, I load B, I load C. You should be able to cross from your wallet mm -hmm. to my wallet, my wallet to affordable the bank at an affordable rate. Yes. Yeah, so that, that is one of the area, uh, areas we are looking at. Can we make it interoperable? And, and, and one of the things, especially for the retail payments, would be to look at uh, a national switch. Okay. Can we have a suite that can route all these payments in, in a more seamless way? Is that something uh, that uh, the central bank is looking at this time or absolutely. it's in uh, strategic planning? Uh, it, it's, I said a roadmap, so <laughs> we are walking towards <laughs> that direction. Yeah, so we're looking at, at the switch as, as one of the areas that would lower cost uh, of uh, payments uh, as one area, but also uh, stakeholder coordination, which is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't do everything alone. You know, mm. you need to collaborate with uh, different stakeholders, including the federation, okay. if you to overcome some of these challenges that they may be facing. Because if you don't know where the problem is, you cannot work on it. Okay. Yeah. And how are you incorporating in the private sector, uh, like you said, the federation here? When we speak about, you know, when you introduce, you know, a card. Now let's talk about access accessibility to finance. It could be an individual, the Visa card the visa payment, and then there is mobile money, there is USSD, things like that. How do you uh, incorporate in the private sector, like you say you cannot do that alone, to make sure you're reaching the grassroots onto these usable tools? You, I think you start with the providers. Okay. You start with who, who can provide this service. And these providers have to innovate. And in innovation, you need to understand uh, the user preferences. Mm -hmm. What would me as a person prefer. Mm -hmm. I think that's very important. So the, the central bank may not directly engage the public, but would engage the public through the providers. Um, we always have stakeholder engagements, and, 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 and this coming week we're having one of them on the same subject. Mm -hmm. uh, actually two, the first one relates to the suite, the next one relates to the general public. Okay. Which I'll talk about. Yes. Uh, like you, Rose, uh, sorry, Mr. Olgim, I'm coming in a second. You arose my expectations when you told us about that roadmap. So, like, when can we expect that? Actually, as we can, uh, actually some of them we're already implementing. <laughs> we're already the walking. Switch, <laughs> the switch implementation <laughs> is what I'm talking about. We're already, yeah. we already walking on that roadmap, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on okay. that same road. But okay. anyway, the switch, I think, maybe two, three or four years, really. Okay, then. Yeah. Th thank you. Uh, Mr. Olgim, what needs to be changed 
what needs to be done when we speak about policy developments in a, you know inclusivity perspective because I do understand there are regulations here and there, regulating uh, um, financial inclusion uh, space and the people using that, if we had to put in place mobile money, we have bought banks. What needs to be done to do this better? Okay, sorry, before we, I was talking about the, the digital stock exchange, because we're doing a lot of work on the payments and mm. credit, and I think, uh, there are certain areas that are lagging behind, but are critical. And I was talking about the aspect of the digital stock exchange mm -hmm. and how this is something. I, there's a different regulator, the Capital Markets Authority, mm -hmm. but I think they, they need to pick lessons from what the central bank is doing because we're talking about financial inclusion in general mm -hmm. and are uh, saying that. Uh, the court came out and said, you know what, I think these, some of these digital things need to go ahead even though they may not be compliant with the current legal regime. So in mm -hmm. terms of mm -hmm. what police interventions uh, we would recommend, we would say one, uh, there's need to come up with measures that promote digital inclusion for particular groups, particularly youth and women. And I'm glad that he says that in the strategy which is coming to an end, mm -hmm. they also look, looked at uh, refugees and host communities, because I think this is uh, extremely important. Mm -hmm. The other way also is to uh, come up with a sector approach, as you know, government now is, has adopted what they call a programmatic approach. Mm -hmm. So we shouldn't just speak about digital inclusion in generalities. We should also kind of take a deep dive in terms of the different programs that government is running to see how can we support those different programs in order to, um, to be digitally inclusive. The mm -hmm. other issue when you're talking about issues around digitalization are the gadgets. Mm -hmm. We need to ensure that people have access to cheap and affordable gadgets and I think this is not the work of the central bank but government in general. Mm -hmm. How can you reduce taxes on digital devices so that you can bring down the cost? Uh, relatedly, we, are, we look at issues around access to electricity. You can't talk about digitalization if people are in the dark, they don't have access to electricity and so on. So these are some of the, some of the recommendations uh, that I would make. Thank you so much. As we, we prepare for the digital journey, digital, we're speaking about it. Are you ready for the scam space? Like you said, um, you're welcoming, you, you like the idea of Bank of Uganda, you know, opening up sandbox. But there are people out there waiting for all this opportunity coming through to scam people. They're already doing that with mobile money. And I have not had any with the, the use of visa payment, but I, I'm sure there is some scam somewhere. Like, how can we prepare for this journey? How can we prepare citizens for this journey we are taking them to? Uh, you see, there, there are two sides of the coin. You talked about not hearing from uh, the Visa and the MasterCards. Mm. Probably it's not as prevalent as, as uh, the one of mobile money. Okay. I think what's important is to see how do consumers safeguard mm -hmm. what they have. Mm -hmm. I'll give you an illustration of uh, having appeared on one of the radio stations in Gulu mm -hmm. and we received a call from a lady saying, do I need to pay to change my PIN? Oh. Do I need to pay? And we also got a case where somebody lost his phone and on the phone he had saved his mobile money PIN and somebody was now using the phone on his own. Mm -hmm. Some of the cases that we actually hear from from the from the population or from the players mm -hmm. is actually the recklessness of the consumer in leaving their pin somewhere people go to the agents and end up giving their pin to help them withdraw money mm -hmm. so what's the central bank doing and also and i think we're doing it very well with ucc you've had uh, those hard facts is, is to empower the population on their side to be digital aware mm -hmm. the safety is very important on the side of uh, the providers they are trying also to ensure that their systems are robust enough mm -hmm. uh, to minimize hackers into the system. But to a large extent, these complaints that come, at the end of the day, realize that actually the consumer may have played a role in, 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 in the fraud that could have happened on their account okay. in one way or the other. If, in fact, you find that it's the provider that has done it or some insider game, 
then there would be a refund for the consumer. All right. So the biggest challenge normally comes from the side of uh, the consumer. All right. Thank you, you so we've much. We've seen cases where you go to make payments and you expose your PIN. Now, supposing somebody grabbed your ATM card after exposing your PIN, what happens? They will use the money without, as if it's you. Mm. You know, even if uh, the provider shows the, the, the recording that it's not you, that becomes a police case. Okay. Yeah. The money will have already, you know, it been transferred to another gone, yeah. account. Thank you so much. Uh, gentlemen, we've got uh, less than, I can say, four minutes to conclude here. But uh, Mr. Walgembe, can I say, can I think that this discussion, we are satisfied with the, at least entrepreneurs, SMEs walking away saying, okay, that is, that is uh, maybe credit I don't need to go get a loan anytime. I, I can do something with my business without inquiring that. I have to prepare. Is, there, is that all that we have to prepare people, entrepreneurs, to thrive in their businesses? Okay, so first of all, as I said, we should not be obsessed by borrowing. There's more to a business than borrowing. Mm. You can run your business and it can grow and it can thrive. Uh, just a second. Maybe I'm requesting you tell us what more is there to acquire finance? What more is there to acquire finances for development? Okay, and I'm saying mm. that you need not borrow to run your business. However, if you must borrow, if you need financing, then you need to look at the various options. Look at debt, look at the financing. Namely, if depending on your size, mm. look at circles, look at uh, microfinance institutions, MDR, commercial bank. If you're not interested in the debt, then you look at the stock exchange, mm. look at the, mm. this, the Uganda Securities Exchange, this Altex. There are a lot of uh, private equity providers at the moment. Mm. There are also entities that are willing to support startups with uh, grants and okay. SM is depending on which sector you're in. If mm -hmm. you're in the wash sector, if you are in the renewable energy sector, if you're in the agricultural sector, depending on where you position yourself and how prepared you are, you can ac access grants. But there is nothing better than preparing yourself and doing things right in your business. If okay. we the best preparation you can make, whether to grow your business or to make yourself ready for financing, is to make sure that you consolidate the fundamentals in the business, you must keep records. Mm. You must ensure that your business is actually profitable and, and so on. Those you must do, and for me, that would be my very strong recommendation. Okay, thank yes. you so much. And uh, I, I, I know some of you might be saying, okay, what if I have to borrow? What do I expect from the bank? Uh, Mr. Chan, could you uh, tell us, Rita, I'm coming to acquire something from the, I'm coming to acquire credit from the bank. Do you speak to me and actually ask me, do you really need this in your business? Do we have such conversation? Or you just do the paperwork, see if I'm eligible, and that's it. You give me the money. I think the problem with our, our borrowers is that they come when they need money so much. Okay. So everything, whether they tell you, don't sit down, they will not take that. It's your right, actually, to go to a financial institution. Let them explain to you everything that you want. Ask, ask all the questions that you want and you can walk away. In fact, uh, the, the financial consumer protection guidelines for the institutions that Bank of Uganda supervises mm -hmm. even gives you what we call a cooling period. You can still pick the loan. After 10 days, you've changed your mind, you take back the money. Okay. But the problem with the consumers normally is that they don't try to understand the terms and conditions. All they say, I want 10 million. Because I feel like by the time I'm coming to the bank, it's my last option. Like I'm desperate and that to comes get back, something. That comes back to the point you were saying. Mm -hmm. Don't let debt or borrowing from a financial institution be your only option. Okay. Explore other options. By the time you're going to the bank, it's okay to borrow, but understand why you're borrowing and how you're going to use the financing. Okay. You know? So I think you need all the viewers who are, who are, who are watching, they mm -hmm. need to understand before you go to borrow, know why you're borrowing mm -hmm. and how you're going to pay back. I think what's, mo what's the most important part, if you're taking the loan, how will you pay back okay. and over what period? But 
financial institutions are willing to explain to, to borrowers. Thank you so much. And uh, lastly to you, Mr. Ochan, I've come to learn how Bank of Uganda and the Ministry of Finance and Economic Development are organizing an annual um, financial inclusion and uh, literacy forum around this particular month. What is it all about? What can oh, we that, expect? That, oh, that, that, that's a good question. We, we've been implementing this strategy for the past uh, four, four, four to five years. Actually, the National Financial Inclusion Strategy comes to an end in September 2022. Mm -hmm. But it provides for an avenue where you bring on board all... It's an inclusive event where you bring on board all stakeholders to discuss topics around uh, financial inclusion, look at what have been the challenges around financial inclusion over the past few years, and where do we see ourselves going in the next uh, five years uh, or so. And, and the topic this time around is centered around uh, digital digitization of financial services and the need for digital financial literacy okay. as tools for enhancing financial inclusion. And, and I think it, it's, it's a good topic looking at where we are. We've talked about uh, digitization, which is very important, mm -hmm. uh, and driving financial services. So it will be on 10th uh, of August. It will be streamed on all our social media. Okay. live and uh, encourage we the will public attend to, there, to join. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, gentlemen, I can see we've come to the conclusion of our uh, particular discussion here. But uh, let me hear from uh, Mr. Olgem in 30 seconds, a take home, and then we close this discussion. Well, I think this is a very interesting discussion. We want to thank the Central Bank for the efforts that it's taking to promote issues of financial inclusion. They've engaged us and we're also attending the forum. So we want to urge all SMEs out there, please listen in because we'll also be uh, representing you there. Okay, thank you so much, yes. Mr. Ochan. Just to thank you for in inviting us. I, I think this engagement is very important. It enlightens the public on things that they may not know. Mm -hmm. The central bank is always open to engagement. Okay. Sometimes we prefer the building, <laughs> but we can still come out and then get the public. Surely. Thank you so oh, thank much, you. gentlemen, for having joined us. And now we close this discussion. My name is Rita Kavanyar. We've been speaking about increasing access to financial services in Uganda, more so in businesses and to entrepreneurs. But how about you as an individual? Surely it will be something for the next day. So make sure you keep it up at here. Do not forget to subscribe. Till next time, bye for now.